you give your name, then you, you, you go down into this other room. And then you walk down this long winded corridor thing. Then you get searched and you're emptying bags, you're taking your shoes off. And you sat waiting because you don't know what happens next. And then you, you go into another room and you sat there with everybody and they just shout you by your second name. You go in through the main hall um, and you've designated an area to sit. The door opens and you're waiting for him to come out. And it was scary, really, really scary. But I had butterflies as well. You know, like a giddiness, you know, thinking, I'm going to see my boy. I have my blinkers on. There might be another 40, 50 people there. I'm just going in to see my son, my son and that's it. It's that feeling of, of wanting to go, of wanting to see that person, but also not wanting to go through a humiliating experience. Oh, God, no, not again. Um, about every single part of the process, from being searched, um, being scrutinised, being sniffed by a dog, being herded around like a like cattle. You've got no power. A mother's instinct is to protect a child, and you can't do that. So I just wanted to get hold of him, and it was no touching. I thought, it's my son, I should be able to give him a hug. But you do feel like you are the prisoner. Something that, that can happen quite easily is you can start to feel like you're somehow public property um, because your privacy is taken away so much that then you start to feel like anyone has a right to ask anything that they want to. And I remember being at a meeting once with a colleague of mine and I know her, you know, I know this person and I always remember we was talking about something and she was asking me question and she said what about inviting your son or something I looked at her and she just went so what do you think then you know you can invite him if you want and I'm just like and I looked at my colleague and I just went but I can't she went why you can have, you can come if he wants like and I said no I said he's away at the moment he's um he's, he's resigning at HMP and I saw her kind of like double take as if to say what did she just say then and I went is it HMP I said he resigns there he's got a new digs I made a joke out of it. I'm as guilty as anybody else because we all look at people and think, oh yeah, well, they got dragged up and this, that and the other and that. But it's not like that. Things can happen in a blink of an eye. It can just happen. And your life is just turned upside down. Made It's just a scary. And then they got sentenced. I remember where we was sat on to the right-hand side of the court and I'm assuming it was a solicitor, or a, but I don't know who it was. And I remember, and I can still remember her face to this day. She was very blonde. And I remember looking over at me and she just wouldn't take her eyes off me. Part of me wanted to say, what is it, what's your issue, love? Do you know what I mean? She was, she was eyeballing me. Do, do you know what I mean? As though I was the one who committed the offence. I can still remember him going down. And he just looked at me and he was like, my little, my little boy just looking at me. And I just couldn't do anything about it. And it just upset me so much. <sighs> Them are the things that really hurt me. He made the mistake. He had to be punished for it, rightly so. But I didn't need to be punished for it. I didn't need to be treated like a piece of dirt. When I used to hear of people who, who's got children or partners inside, they used to think, oh God, you know, I won't put up with that, I'd be gone. And then all of a sudden, I was on the other fence, you know, side of that fence, and mine were inside. And no, I wasn't gone. <laughs> I was there 24 hours a day for him. We haven't committed a crime. But it's like you have, you might as well have gone out and done it yourself sometimes. You know, with the reactions that you can get of certain people. I used to say they'd gone away. You know, they've gone, oh, they've gone away for, it for a bit, or they've gone on holiday or something like that. But at the end of the day, it's the reality of it, isn't it? There's not only my sons who's been inside. There's lots of people inside. So I just decided not to hide the fact. You seem as though you get more guilt and from, from the professionals, the way they treat you, the way they speak to you. It's like they're working against you. And I'd rather them work with me. I am not a threat. I am an asset. It breaks my heart when people talk about us or treat us as if we're 
scum. To begin with, I felt a lot of shame, and that, that by you know guilt by association and all of that, and then also very defensive, both about my loving him and his role in what had happened. So that went on for a long time as well. You become like a prisoner because. I stopped going out a lot. Um, I stopped. Very often, I would I stopped socialising because I found it very painful. I found it painful talking about the situation, not talking about the situation, being with couples, being with being seen as available in some way when I wasn't. The tragedy is that we're often treated as, as if we're the part of the problem. And sometimes that's true. But I've met many, many people who were there to stand up to the person in prison and say what you did was out of order. It was terrible. People will and have called me stupid and uh, told me very loudly often what he's done, as if I don't know as if I don't understand, as if I can't hear. <laughs> and actually, the whole journey has taken an immense amount of intelligence and wisdom to get through and to understand and to negotiate within oneself, but also with other people. So I feel far from stupid. Even though friends were very good in you could chew their ear off and cry and moan and whinge about things. I needed to speak to people that were more like-minded, you know, that would understand and probably guide me in the right direction. And that's when he told me about Pops. If I would have known Pops would have existed then, I would have been straight on the phone. You're not alone. You're not the only one going through this. There is plenty, plenty of people out there. So don't ever feel guilty and don't ever feel alone. We cannot help who we love. You know, sometimes we just love people and that's that because they're our brother or our sister or our partner or child. No matter how privileged life you've had, you know, how rich you are, poor you are, it could happen. Like I said, in the blink of an eye, it can just happen. And I won't wish it on anybody.